What is going on there YouTube and welcome back to another comic book video. This time we are going to continue our coverage over the dawn of X era of X-Men comics and we pick up with X-Force number 11 and number 12. This is going to be the last two chapters that we are going to cover that is going to help us get ready for the X of Swords event. Of course we know that it was a crossover event between all of the X-Men titles as a way to wrap up the dawn of X era of X-Men comics. With that being said, these two books are going to bring back Xeno. Of course, another evil organization out there in Marvel Comics that is trying to get rid of the mutant race. Now, they have found different ways to kind of help them do it, but they actually made human beings. Like, literally made people out of science or stuff, whatever. Gave them life turn them into assassins and use them to attack Kakoa or anything that has ties to Kakoa. Also, using clones of mutants as well. But now they have a new way. Then we learn the leader of this group because it is not the Peacock Man. So I really do hope you enjoy this video because it is going to give us a lot of answers that we have been waiting for for a good period of time. But I do hope you enjoy today's comic book video. And so to get into today's storyline, we actually pick up with Beast. Dr. Reyes and Sage. Now, right now, you have our three characters looking over the dead bodies that were created by Xeno as a way to go kill off the mutant race. Now, while you have our characters looking over these dead bodies, they do remember that each of these dead bodies were made differently, meaning that they all had different abilities or different things done to them. Now, with that being said, though, when you have Dr. Reyes cut open a particular body that is the moment you do have a smaller body pop out kind of like a russian doll and those russian dolls are kind of like toys where you have a toy and as soon as you open it up there's another one inside and it keeps going like that for a good period of time and so right now inside these bodies there was another dead body inside there and of course this new body was able to cut open the throat of dr reyes also stab Sage and then get away from Beast. And of course, it runs off into the island to cause more problems down the road. And so, of course, this is the new way Xeno had done as a way to help them get rid of the mutant race. Because as soon as a mutant thinks they killed off one of their assassins, there's a new body waiting to pop out of the old body. And it keeps going like that, like a Russian doll. But that is when we actually jump over to Domino in the Savage Land meeting up with Colossus. Because right now Colossus is a farmer in the Savage Land. Now with that being said though, you do have Domino actually asking Colossus for help. Now this is Marvel kind of wrapping up the idea of Domino and Colossus being a couple. And the reason why I say that because when it came to Domino in the earlier books of X-Force, she was kidnapped. And matter of fact, she was kidnapped, held hostage, and Xeno basically cut off her skin as a way to make clones of her so that her clones could help them kill off the mutant race. And they tortured her so badly that she was mentally broken. Now, of course, Colossus was also beaten badly for different reasons but Colossus and Domino were able to kind of support one another but the problem was though when Domino died and when she came back to life she was completely different she was not the same person like she was before she died because when it came to Charles Xavier when they brought her back to life they kind of removed the idea of her knowing what happened to her while she was being tortured by Xeno as a way to make her mentally stable again. And so for Colossus, he hated that idea because he knew Domino did not want that to happen. That if Domino came back to life, she wanted to remember everything about her past life. But right now, Colossus kind of moved on, became a farmer in the Savage Land, and kind of does not want to be part of X-Force or anything with Domino. On top of that, 
when Domino asks for his help, he actually tells her no. He walks away, and then you have some random lady that apparently loves Colossus tell Domino, you need to go away. Because this right here, him being a farmer, is the best thing for him. And actually, is helping him a lot. And me as well. But getting back over to the Russian doll problem, you actually do have a storyline tell us that Beast was trying to chase down the creature, but the creature actually got away from Beast. And so you have Beast trying to call up Sage to see that Sage is back on her feet again so that she could actually help figure out where that creature went to. But of course, Sage is still knocked out. Beast can't find the creature, and we do see the creature actually typing away on Sage's computer, looking up a certain kind of information. And apparently, that information is going to be very important for this storyline, but also the X of Sword storyline as well. But getting back over to Colossus, we do see Colossus right now continuing to work on the farm. Because remember, he did tell X-Force that he does not want to be part of their team. Well, he told Domino that. But either way, though, that is the moment he does see a bunch of clones of Jamie Maddox right now running through a Krakoa gate. Because right now, something is popping off on the island. And with them using that gate, it's them trying trying to get back to the island to help out and Colossus can tell something is wrong on the island he needs to go because whatever is happening right now on the island could actually lead over here to the savage land to their farmland and so you have Colossus actually go over to the island and when he walks through the gate that is the moment he do see a bunch of Russian doll creatures just killing off mutants left and right which means that those dead bodies we saw earlier that beast sage and dr reyes were looking at it wasn't just one body that was a Russian doll all of those bodies were Russian dolls. Now here comes the plot twist though, and you see what I mean as we go through the next section. And here is the big plot twist. Honestly, it's not a big plot twist, but it's kind of cool because remember, they're calling these things Russian dolls, and you have these creatures actually being Russian dolls because as soon as you kill off one of them another one pops out of the old body a smaller one and so they continue to keep getting smaller and smaller but as soon as you think you found a way to kill them a new version of that creature just pop out and continues where the last one left off at to continue to bring havoc to this island and so right now it's colossus and the x-men and x-force right now trying to deal with these russian doll creatures that xeno has made as a way to bring down the mutant island but that is the moment we have to remember about the first Russian doll that we saw in this video. Because remember, it was typing away at Sage's computer looking for some kind of information. And of course, it was able to find that information. It was looking for the Cerebro Sword. Now that sword is actually very important. And the reason why, because right after Charles Xavier died, remember, Charles Xavier died back in the first attack. Zeno did on Krakoa when he died he was shot in the head but of course on his head he was holding Cerebro and so when he got shot in the head that version of Cerebro died with Charles Xavier and so Magneto basically took the dead parts of Cerebro and turned it into a sword but when the the five were able to bring back Charles Xavier and Beast was able to make a new version of Cerebro you have Magneto hand over the Cerebro Sword kind of like saying use this as a way to protect you or use this as a way to be a symbol of our nation and so right now we see the Russian doll the first one actually taking the sword and leaving the island but getting back over to X-Force and Colossus, we actually come to find out the battle is over. They were able to get rid of all the Russian dolls and to be able to continue on with their day. Now, of course, you do have Domino kind of thanks Colossus for actually helping out. But you have Colossus just walk away because, again, 
He does not want this life at all. He does not want to be part of X-Force at all. He wants to live a normal, peaceful life, a normal farmer life. And so, of course, he does walk away. And Domino, she kind of feels a tad bit upset with what Colossus is kind of doing to himself and to her as well. But then we jump over to a different part of the island where we actually pick up with Kid Omega. Now Kid Omega is actually part of the X-Force team. Now with that being said, we actually do see him right now hanging out with one of the Stefford Cuckoos. Now remember, the Stefford Cuckoos are kind of like the clones of Emma Frost, but at the same time, her daughters as well or she looks at them as her daughters but either way though earlier in our coverage over the dawn of x era of x-men comics we do know that one of the stefford cuckoos is actually dating cable but this one is apparently dating kid omega or this could mean that all the stefford cuckoos are dating both cable and Kid Omega. Either way though, once you have Kid Omega kiss this Stefford Cuckoo goodbye and tries to walk away, we do see that there was another Russian doll that got away and was able to stab Kid Omega right in the chest and then push him through one of the Kokoan gates. And that right there is huge because when he actually goes through that gate, he does land in Russia. And remember, Russia is right now, they're a big huge no-no to mutants right now. Like, if you're a mutant and you live in Russia, you are property of Russia. But on top of that, mutants are not allowed in Russia either. And so with them kind of crashing in Russia, this is a huge problem. But that is the moment we come to find out that when it comes to Kid Omega, he was actually stabbed with the Cerebro Sword so that he can take it with him as he goes through the gate. But when he crashed in Russia, of course, you have someone pulled a sword out of his body. And that person was no other than Mikkel. And Mikkel is a very powerful character. But on top of that, he is the brother of Colossus. And let's not forget, Colossus and Mikkel are both from Russia. And this is huge because there could mean that Mikkel has been helping Russia get rid of Krakoa. On top of that, it could also mean that Colossus could have been helping his brother as well. We don't know. But we do know that right now Mikkel has the Cerebro Sword. When it comes to Mikkel, Mikkel is a very interesting character because he first appeared back in Uncanny X-Men number 285. And when it comes to his abilities, he has the ability to manipulate subatomic matter and warp energy by alternating their wavelengths to an unknown degree. He has used these energies to teleport through space. He is also able to fire energy blasts as well, and affect another energy blast power such as turning Iceman fully solid. And so with that, it's kind of, you have an idea what his powers are, but at the same time, is still kind of unknown because he is a very powerful character. But when we get into X-Force number 12, we do see him carrying Kid Omega away. And you do have Mikkel tell Kid Omega that what he is doing is for Russia, that he is Russia. And of course, he'll make sure that Russia does succeed. But getting back over to the island, we actually do see Beast using a tech that Forge made to kind of help Sage get back on her feet. Because remember, the Russian doll did attack her, and of course it did knock her out. But with the tech from Forge, it was able to get her back on her feet so that she can begin the process of actually figuring out what in the world is going on. And so that is the moment she does look into all the different logs, the logs that are used as a way to keep track of people using a Kokoan gate. Of course, remember, Kokoan gates give people the ability to teleport almost anywhere across the world. And so with that being said, she was able to figure out one gate was actually used just recently. And that gate was used by 
Kid Omega when he was stabbed and thrown through that gate and it led him over to Russia. And of course, when she does look into that gate, the cameras around that gate, that is the moment you have Kid Omega leave a message on the ground near the camera to tell Sage and the rest of the mutants, Mikkel is behind all of this. Mikkel is back and he's working with his home country, Russia. And that right there is actually huge. But that is the moment we actually pick up with Zeno. Now remember, Zeno is one of the many evil organizations out there in Marvel Comics that's right now trying to get rid of the mutant race. And they were the ones that had created those Russian dolls as a way to kind of attack the mutant race over and over again. And right now we see them basically introducing to their organization new creations that could possibly help them get rid rid of the mutant race but here comes the big shocker though because while you have the peacock man the man we actually thought was the leader of Zeno, that is the moment you have Mikkel appear and this is huge because now it seems like Mikkel is actually helping Zeno get rid of his own race because Mikkel is a mutant matter of fact you have Mikkel tell us that apparently Zeno has been having a lot of meetings but not inviting Mikkel. They're kind of pushing him to the side. And he is wondering if they're doing that because he is a mutant. But either way, you have Mikkel walk in and he begins the process of putting things back in his order. Now, we actually do jump back over to the island where we pick up with Black Tom and um, Beast. I almost said the wrong name. Black Tom and Beast. But either way, you do have Black Tom and Beast going to a particular character who basically has connections to Russia as well. Now, you would think they would go to Colossus because Colossus does have connections to Russia. But at the same time, Colossus is the brother of Mikkel. But here's the thing. They don't. Instead, you have Black Tom and Beast actually go over to Omega Red because Omega Red also has connections to Russia. He was born there. On top of that, Omega Red has sometimes worked with Mikkel. And so right now, it's Beast and Black Tom wondering, is Omega Red kind of working behind the scenes with Mikkel? Because remember, Omega Red just randomly appear one day in the Wolverine series and has been given the chance to actually live on the island, which is actually huge. And so you have Black Tom use his abilities to capture Omega Red to begin the process of actually questioning him. But getting back over to Mikkel, the Peacock Man, and also the organization known as Zeno, we actually do see the Peacock Man sent in his latest creation as a way to fight against Mikkel. Because when it comes to the Peacock Man, he wants to be the only leader of this group. On top of that, he does not want to work with Mikkel at all because Mikkel is a mutant. Now with that being said though, you do have Mikkel being able to easily take down the latest creation that Zeno and the Peacock Man were able to make. But once he does that right there, you do have Mikkel walk up to the Peacock Man and say, listen, you want to get rid of the mutant race? I understand that. But if you want to do that, you need to work alongside with mutants. That means me, meaning that stop shutting me out and let me actually help you complete the goal that you are trying to complete. But then we jump over to the Savage Land because remember the mutants have basically built a farmland out there in the Savage Land and Colossus is a farmer out there. But that is the moment you do have X-Force come by and they actually confront him. And the reason why they confront him is because they want to know what in the world is going on with his brother Mikkel. On top of that, you have Beast kind of tell us, and we're left to believe this could possibly be true, that when it comes to Colossus, Colossus could have been giving out information about Charles Xavier, the mutant race, the island, their operations, all of that, over to Russia and Mikkel. And so, of course, you have Colossus 
not really denying anything. You really have Colossus kind of like, I knew this day would come. And it's kind of like, wait, has Colossus been giving out information to Russia about the X-Force, the X-Men, Charles Xavier, the island, the mutant race and their operations? Has he been doing that for Russia and his brother, Mikkel? What in the world is going on? And so you have Beast actually put handcuffs that Colossus can break very easily on his wrist and they walk through a gate to go back over to the island so that Colossus could be interrogated. But when they go through the gate and when they arrive back on the island, that is the moment we come to find out they're right in the middle of a parade. And this is huge because usually a parade is used as a way to celebrate something, something great happening in the world or in the area the parade is happening in. But of course, this is not a good thing. Colossus has been arrested. Colossus is going to be taken away to be questioned. So why in the world is there a parade happening right now? And that is the moment you have Beast tell us that he's the one who put it together. And the reason why? To spread fear across the island. Because when it comes to Beast, he feels like Charles Xavier is not being a great leader in a way because when it comes to beasts he feels like the idea of having a lot of evil mutants on the island it could lead to problems down the road but when it comes to charles xavier he's being very trustworthy to every single mutant no matter if they're good or bad and for beasts right now that is not okay and so with colossus having connections with mikhail a mutant who is from russia what he's doing right now is an idea of spreading fear across the island saying that if you are from russia and we find out the possibility that you are giving out information over to russia we are going to arrest you. And they're using Colossus as a way to be an example of that. Now, of course, the other members of the X-Force team, they had no idea about this. But for Beast, it was his idea alone. And of course, he approved it because his ideas to him are never wrong. But right now, you have Wolverine Domino upset with the idea that Beast even did that. But getting back over to Zeno and Mikkel, we do see that right now you have Zeno and Mikkel agreeing to work together. And this is huge because right now that means Zeno is more powerful. Zeno could possibly find different ways to actually attack the X-Men and the mutant race. And so with that being said, you have Mikkel hand the Peacock Man the Cerebro Sword. And the reason why, because all the information about the different mutants on the island is on that sword right there. And of course, now that sword is being handed over to the Peacock Man. And once he finds a way to actually access the information, it could possibly mean the end for the mutant race. And then you have Mikkel hand over Kid Omega to kind of make the Peacock Man begin the process of new projects that could involve using the body of Kid Omega. But then we see Wolverine taking Jean Grey to a certain room. Now you do have Wolverine tell Jean Grey that he's kind of in a hurry, mainly because what's going on next, which is the X of Swords crossover. But at the same time though, that is the moment he does have Jean Grey walk into a room and see that Colossus and Kid Omega have been tied up because he wants Jean Grey to use her powers to read the mind of Colossus and Kid Omega to hopefully figure out what is really going on and this is where we are going to end today's comic book video so please leave me a like down below and subscribe also if you have any suggestions on books i should read well please let me know in the comments below because you never know your suggestion could be a future video down the road but guys i'll see y'all next time later